I was asked recently how I paint my number plates on my models because a lot of people seem to have trouble with techniques. Uh, to demonstrate that I'm going to use some HO plates that I was given to do some painting on. These are just for various models by BGM and SCM. Uh, Victorian Railways plates were mainly painted black and white but as you can see blue and white is also possible using this technique. First of all you want to paint your brass plates and I can't stress this point enough that you should really use an etch primer. I've just got a cheap Dulux one that I got from Bunnings. Uh, not a fan of this brand, but I basically try a new one every time I run out. And that's what I got at the moment. You want to remember to use light coats. Two or three should do. You don't want to apply it too heavy or you'll start to fill the plates. As you can see with these ON30 plates here, they're a bit too full of paint. That was because the primer was a bit heavier on that end. Thankfully all the HO ones were fine. When you paint the plates, you want to use a good airbrush paint and again use very light coats or you'll fill it in too much. I just use Humbrol enamel. This is a satin white I've had for quite a while. It's actually a matte white. You get some more of it actually. You want to remember to use light coats out of an airbrush. I just have a cheap $20 airbrush from I think it was Bunnings or Super Cheap Auto. It's fine but you want to make sure it's really light thinned out about half paint, half thinners, or to your preferred consistency. One of the most important steps of this technique is to gloss coat your plates. Again, light coats. I did two on these plates, and to prove that you don't need anything expensive, this was, I think, $4 from Bunnings. It's just a white knight clear gloss. Uh, Multi-purpose enamel. <coughs> For the actual painting of the plates, this is for the black background. The problem people have is uh, painting the inside surface black while keeping with the white on the outside. Technique I used on 9A here as well as 17A in this box. Except 9A has blue. I'm going to use, uh, this is just artist acrylic black paint. It's water based and that is I think the most important part you need something that you can clean up easy. So I've got some here in my little palette and to apply it I'm just going to use a wooden skewer. I've sharpened the end a little bit and then just pressed it down just to remove the sharp end. And here I've got some just ordinary tap water. <clears throat> I'm going to take some of the paint, separate it from the rest and just mix a bit of water in it until it's a consistency I like. You want it to be a fairly thin consistency that it flows and the way you're going to tell that it's flowing correctly is that it doesn't quite stick to the gloss paint, but it is going to fill the little recess in the number plates. So that's thin enough. It's fine to paint over the white. It's not going to be a problem. Maybe a bit more. You just got to make sure you fill that entire recess. Probably not going to focus here, but this R class plate, I'm making sure to get right up into the corners as well as inside the R. I am not concerned if it covers the letter or the outside raised square at all. And you do exactly the same for the numbers. You can see here, it's sort of pooling into little drops. The surface tension of the thin paint is not letting it actually adhere to the white surface, and that's what you're after. You don't want it to adhere, but you want it to fill the recess. It's very important that you don't push down too hard, or you could affect the paint. And what's also very important is that you let the paint dry. I let the primer dry overnight before I painted the white. I gave the white overnight as well and then I applied my gloss coats. I gave the first coat about an hour, hour and a half to dry and then I put the second coat on and then I let it dry for over 24 hours. You want it to really harden up otherwise you're going to run into problems. With this acrylic paint you want it to be touch dry. And basically that's until you see the gloss sheen 
start to disappear. See it's quite glossy at the moment, that's because it's still wet. You'll know it's dry when it starts to go a bit more matte. And that's when you can look at doing the next step. I'm going to go ahead and paint all these plates and we'll catch up on the next step. Just to make a little point as I work here, you can see how glossy this paint is. And you can, but you can still see the recess. That's because with the water it dries quite a bit quicker, which is how you can tell on these R719 plates. They're starting to go matte. That's the point at which you know it's about ready to move on to the next step. But I'm going to go ahead and do a lot here first. Thinning the paint makes sure that it gets into the recess, and because there's gloss paint over the white will flow off the numbers into the recess before it flows out of the recess. So you know it's going to be where you need it to be. It also helps with self-leveling. If the paint's too thick, it will just form a layer of paint, a thick layer of paint. And when you get to the next step, that could be problematic, as it would peel the whole black paint off rather than just the recess. So thinning the paint just helps to separate it. Separate what's on the surface to what's in the recess. Okay, I'm not quite finished here, I've only painted half of them. In fact, the end of the J plate might be still a bit wet, but you can see that the R and the K plates are pretty dry now, at least they're matte. So I'm going to move on to the next step already. When I was painting them, I put them on a bit of masking tape, which I taped to just a couple of layers of styrene. And in painting them white and gloss, the layer of paint got quite heavy, and to detach the plates from the tape, I just cut around the edge of it really close, and really lightly with a, just a number 5 blade, just to cut through that layer of paint, and I put the blade under it, under the plate, and just pushed it up. So now the plate's off, I'm going to move on to the next step, moment of truth step as it were, of removing the paint from the top of the numbers. To this I've just got a couple of Lego bricks which I use in my scratch build anyway to keep right angles and this is just a cloth used to clean glasses or camera lenses. Just an old one. You want to avoid using tissues or paper towels for this step because they tend to have a fibrous quality that kind of rubs off and gets everywhere. And you want to avoid that just to avoid putting scratches in the paint or removing too much, you want a really smooth surface. <coughs> so to get that smooth surface, I'm going to pull the cloth tight over those Lego bricks. So now that's a nice flat surface. In fact, that Lego brick's a bit bumpy, so I'm going to use that surface instead. Next I'm going to just dampen this cloth slightly. You don't want to saturate it, but I'm just going to get my tap water to dip my finger in it. Just soak it in a bit, just so it's a bit wet. I'm going to get my number of plate. It's our class plate. Paint's nice and matte. I'm going to put it face down on my cloth, then I'm going to get my finger and just very lightly just rub it on that wet cloth. Very, very lightly. You can see it's starting to have effect. I'm just going to keep going, not putting any extra pressure on it. Getting closer. You can see that the paint is getting a bit glossy with the water, and I don't want to reactivate it, so I'm just going to air that out a little bit just to take some of the wet off. my plate again, just very gently. Just a little bit more on this one edge, I'm going to put pressure on the edge that I need to remove the paint. Not very high pressure, very lightly. Okay, it's proven to be a bit stubborn, so I'm just going to apply a tiny bit more pressure. Just 
just about. Might need a little bit more water. The water just helps the water base paint wash off a little bit, but because you're using a flat surface, it shouldn't affect what's in the recess. There you go. I did try one before, so just to make sure I didn't look like an idiot. K103 plate, and that one turned out very nice indeed. Using these water-based paints, it's just evidence that you can use pretty much any paint you want, any color you want, which is why it works very well on blue plates for the Canadian red locos, or it could also work for any other diesel number plate or even a different state or country. Okay, you can see now all these paints are painted. All these plates are painted. Some of them are better than others. The only ones I'd probably redo are these 12A plates, which shows that this technique works quite well with all sorts of etched brass plates. So a couple of steam era models, a couple of broad gauge models, and even the these ones here are from the ON30 Haskell and Ace. One of them. Very simple technique. Uh, the paint I use for the uh, 12 by plates here, again, is an artist acrylic, water-based, just a cobalt blue. I added a bit of black to it, stuck in it a bit. A bit of weathering could help that, or I might just redo them. It's not, they're not too perfect. But all the HO ones are quite good. You can see that. Careful to go on the builder's plates as well. They're a bit harder being so small, but they're good enough. <clears throat> now this paint is not sealed, it will rub off. In fact a lot of people they think for the technique at the end you can just use your finger to rub them off the, the tops of the letters. I would not do that because the finger is quite squishy and would go into the recess and could rub out the paint from the inside as well. You want something perfectly flat to rub on that won't get into the into the recess and remove the paint that you don't want. To seal this paint, you're going to want to seal it or it could rub off just from handling. Uh, I'm just going to use the same gloss as I did before, because that's what I've been asked to do. Uh, I would normally use a uh, dull coat, particularly the tester's dull coat is quite good. Rattle can perfect. There's no issue at all. Just make sure you do light coats. You could use airbrush paints if you want, but I don't see the point with clear coats. So hopefully this is helpful. Maybe I'll do more modeling tips in the future. We'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something.